Well, hello, boys and girls. Welcome to the next episode of the Rusty Scale Show. We did the unbox video of the MiG-29 ICM model in 172 scale, and you know, every model wants to be assembled, so now it was finally time to build it. I did this almost completely out of the box. The only thing I added was the handle for the ejector seat. The red gloss handle you see there in the middle, attached to the pilot seat. I just used two copper wires, painted them with gloss red, or first I bended them, then I painted them, and then I attached them by using super glue. Uh, besides this, I did this build completely out of the box because it was a body build with Acho's props, a fellow Swiss scale modeler I know from Instagram. So if you don't know him already, you should absolutely head over to his account and check it out, give him a follow, check his work because he is doing very, very fine scale modeling work. So in general, the fit of um, the whole model is not bad, but it's also not perfect. You know, it all um, it has some fit issues, smaller fit issues here and there, but actually it's nothing to be too concerned about. So I placed the clamps in the strategic best position to hold everything together, I used the extra thin ammo mix cement, one of my favorite glues meanwhile. It has a very strong bonding uh, ability, the capillary action is very great. When you apply this glue between two parts like this, it's still a bit open, you can almost witness how they bond together. It's, it's really, it's fantastic, fantastic product. So, <coughs> so here I, I do have the wings and uh, the stabilizers and that's the next step to um, just glue everything together and I also have this little part here this little part here which I forgot to place inside yeah because now it's open oh I should maybe oh it's no problem I should have placed this inside the lower half uh, yeah now I have to think of something. <laughs> now it was time to get rid of the seam lines. I did my little seam line trick by using the Alcalad microfiller. You can check that out in the video. I just link up there um, where I explain it a bit, a bit more detailed maybe. Um, basically, you just have to spray the microfiller over the, your seam lines, then gently sand it down so you will see exactly where you need some more filler, then apply some more filler, uh, especially in those areas. After the second or third coat or fourth coat, you will sand it down a bit more. Just gent gently do this with uh, 1200 grit or higher and then finish up higher with uh, 1500 and then maybe 2000 and more um, you can go as high as you like but that's just basically the way you have to do it after we got rid of most of the seam lines it was time to use the primer I tried a new technique to spray it on well not exactly completely new I did it a similar way but not exactly like this so the thing is, the first coat you do is kind of mist all over the model, okay? Just a very thin mist. You let it dry, you spray some other parts meanwhile, then you do a second coat, which will be a bit thicker than the first one, but not much, just, you know, just a bit. You let this dry again, spray on the second coat on the other small parts, and then you do the third and, and last coat, which will be more thick, and you can completely cover everything. So you make sure you have a very nice um, coverage and um, the color does not react in any kind of way while it's drying. So for the pre-shading, I wanted to place the colors that I wanted to use, that I plan to use for the pre-shading in order or in, in, in relation to which parts are more exposed to the weather and wind um, than other parts. So all around the edges of the model, I, I pre-shaded it with white. 
the first inner layer you could say I did with blue because I thought blue would react nice with the different types of gray and the off-white so I used blue for this here I'm testing out this it's a cool way to test out the color and to practice also your airbrush skills by doing some dots very uh, small dots try to do some straight lines and um, like yeah this curved line so as third color I use this burnt umber to appreciate the rest of the parts Okay, again, I'm trying out the color by also um, practicing my airbrushing skills. So of course black, you know how it goes. It was time for appreciating alongside all the panel lines and all the details. It's a very nice job. You don't have to be too exact. Actually, it's maybe even better if it's not 100% exact you have uh, you want to have that natural look of uh, of uh, shading All right, all right, hold on, hold on. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Sky gray. Oh, you don't see anything here. Sky gray. This is ICM acrylic paint. ICM acrylic paint from the paint set, all right? I'm gonna show you the paint set, hold on. From this paint set, the Ghost of Kiev paint set, all right? I already used the uh, off-white it was much better than I thought. So let's check this out. Where's the paint? <laughs> the jar is filled. Oops. I mean the jar. Hold on. It's filled until here. Until here. Yeah. Now check this out. Sky gray. And watch how thick the paint is, you know. very thick oh, I did a real mess here didn't even realize hold on I hate this camera so this ICM acrylic paint is really thick no wonder the bottle is only filled up uh, up up here something like until here so this build is a body build with Cho props, all right? So I really don't want to mess it up. So I said to myself, on this build, no experiments, no experiments. So I'm using my go-to thinner, the Vallejo airbrush thinner. 20 drops at least. So, oh, hold on, hold on. First, no experiments, no experiments. So as always, flow improver first. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm excited now. I'm excited now. I add the amount of thinner that I think it's needed and then add two more drops. Okay. So if you say like five drops, you add five and then two more. So seven in all together. So these ICM paints, they, they, they need a lot of thinning. Okay. Um, because they are so thick and they're even like chalky like a bit, you know. So I'm trying out a new technique, all right? The first coat that I lay down with the acrylic paint is a very thin coat. Actually, I wanted to make it a little bit thinner than I did it now, even thinner. Now it will dry while I'm talking. I think it already has dried more or less in this few seconds. If you wanna uh, skip the time because you're not talking to the camera while you're doing the paint job, like me, like a lunatic, uh, you can just you can just speed up the drying process. 
by brushing some air on it. I can see it's quite dry, so I will apply the second coat, which will be more or less also very thin. A bit thicker than this one, but also thin. So let's go. I already used up the paint I mixed, I have to do another mix. So it was not 30 drops of paint. But now I laid down the second coat of paint, a bit thicker. Now I have to let it dry anyways, because I have to mix more paint. So that is perfect, that is perfect. Actually, it's like, you know, that is like um, faith. Now, for instance, here, here, I spray oh I just touched it and removed some of the paint that was very stupid but I just wanted to show you that here I applied a bit too much paint also here but I already like it I know this will turn out crazy trust me so after I mixed uh, another cup of paint it was finally time to lay down the third and final coat yeah, it's a bit difficult to clean the airbrush completely after you use those paints. Not a big problem, but you have to be a bit more careful while cleaning, while cleaning um, as if you would have some uh, Vallejo model air, for instance. Okay, now I use dark gray, the ICM acrylic dark gray. It's thinned down a lot because now I wanna try to do a bit of post shading here. Bit of post shading in some areas. Okie dokie, it's already done. The battery died on me. I just did it off camera. So now I'm just gonna do another coat of the uh, sky gray, the highly, highly thin sky gray. Try to fade it in a bit, let's go. So I did a little bit of a back and forth here with the pre-shading, then the painting, then a post shading and a repainting or kind of a fading. Um, it gave me also, it gave me time to practice a bit more with the ICM paints um, to see how they work, how they react, what's possible and what not. And uh, yeah, they're really nice to use. They're, it, it's a good choice. Um, as I said, like mentioned before, they're uh, uh, very thick. You have to use a lot of thinner, um, but the coverage is good. And also afterwards, while I, you know, did some um, gloss coats and decals and um, weathering products, it wasn't the problem. So here we can see the finished lower half. Um, this is already with the gloss coat and the decals on and the panel line washes and everything. So um, this is actually already the finished version of the lower half. Um, we're gonna take care of the upper half of the MiG-29 Ghost of Kiev in the next video. So thanks for watching and see you in the next video.